Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Well, you see my title, hallelujah, hallelujah. I haven't been on this early in a minute. Praise God, praise God. Let's see what I don't need no more light down. Uh -uh. Well, I will tell you this. If you see my title, then you know I'm already going in, hallelujah, to his name. Um, God really, really, he woke me up. Let me tell you something. Judgment begins in the house of God. I don't care how you look at it day in and day night, day out. God says that the judgment begins in the house of God. Now, hold on. I'm not talking about bashing your brother and sister. But when it's done in love, rebuke, correct, inspect, and check. I'm going to tell you the truth. You Christians get upset. You get upset. And notice I said you Christians, because true Christians know God will send somebody to correct you, to check you, to bless you, to inspect you. That's just the way it is when you are authentic. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. But I'm going to do this thing the way God says. So let first of all, good morning. God bless everybody. I got to do this biblically. So you got to um, roll with me. Roll with me. All right, so the first thing I want to do is, I want us to take us back to the Ten Commandments. All right, thou should not have no God, other gods before us. That's the one. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say everything twice. Thou should not have any gods before me. Do y'all understand what that first commandment is? That means money, fame, whatever, whatever. You, you kind of get the drift. Okay. Number two, thou should not worship any graven image. That's any image. Do you know that I used to have some angel pictures. You're not even supposed to have anything that resemble the kingdom of God hanging up. How many people got them little sharp fat angels on your wall? Oh, come on somebody. I used to have them too. Oh, Y'all don't want to. Okay, whatever. Three. Thou should not take God's name in vain. That's why when y'all say God, D-A-M-N. That's no, you're not supposed to do that. And I said I was going to read everything twice. So let me go back. Thou should not worship any graven image. Number three, thou should not take God's name in vain in any shape, form, or fashion. Number four, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Now, I need to tell y'all something. A lot of people take the Sabbath this Sunday. It's not. It's Saturday. But notice he also says Sabbath. So it could be Saturday or Sunday. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's say that one again. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That's four. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother. Even when you get older. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You are to honor thy father and thy mother. That's number five. Number six, thou should not kill. I'm going to say that one again. Thou should not kill. All right. Come on. And that's spiritually with your mouth, too. Hallelujah. Six, thou should not commit adultery. Thou should not commit adultery. I don't know who somebody I want to call all the time. Thou should not commit adultery. I don't care. Well, you know, we stay, we, we separated. We're not in the same household. It does not matter. Wait till you get a divorce first before you start gallivanting. I didn't made up a name, gallivanting, galloping and bapping. You ain't supposed to even be talking on the phone. You ain't supposed to be going to see him. You ain't supposed to be kissing him. You ain't supposed to be caressing him. You ain't supposed to do nothing. Thou should not commit adultery. Hold on. That means that even if you have lust in your heart, the Bible says that you are lusting if you look up on them and say, oh, they fine. And you knowing that you married. Now, I'm not saying that don't happen, but quickly repent. Because you're going to see fine people, fine men and fine women. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's keep going. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go number eight. Thou should not steal. I'm going to say that one again. Thou should not steal. Number nine. Thou should not bear false witness. Thou should not bear false witness. That's lying. Because some of y'all lying. So I don't know why Christians want to lie. A little white lie, black lie, green lie, purple lie, red lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Stop lying. Tell people the truth in love. And sometimes you have to be a strong rebuke. Praise God. Thou should not covet. Thou should not covet. That means the same thing as stealing, but not only taking other people's stuff. Their wives. The Bible says don't cover their wives. You know what I'm saying. Praise God. Okay, I'm not finished. I got to do this thing the way God said. Now I want to read about John, John the Baptist. Mark 6 to 18. This is what John said. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. All right, hold on. I want to walk this thing out the way God want me to. Okay, I'm going to verse 19. 
Then he said to Herod, he said, Therefore Herodus had a quarrel against him and would have him killed, but she could not. I'm going somewhere with all this. I know y'all know I am. Just because of my title. I know it. And they got some of y'all just ready, huh? I'm ready too, so so let's do it. All right. Also, verse 20. For Herod feared John. Mm, I wonder why he feared John. Probably because the anointing was on John. Okay, let's keep on going. Knowing that he was a just man and a holy and observed him. And when he had heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. So he really honored John. So my whole thing is John honored him too, but... When he was wrong, John told him, okay, 621, let's keep on going. Come on, we're going somewhere with this. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains and chief estates of Galilee. That's verse 20. Let's go to verse 21. Actually, that was verse 21. Okay, let's go to 22. 22 says, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king sat unto the damsel, ask of me whatever thou wilt, and I will give thee. Now, hold on. That was witchcraft right there. She was dancing so seductive. So some pretty much like the stars do and, and just had him em- em- mesmerized to where anything you want, anything you want. Notice how this was a plot. Now, this is a witchcraft plot. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me continue. Let me continue. I'm going somewhere. 623. 623 it says and he swore unto her whatsoever thou should ask of me i will give it thee unto half of my kingdom wow she must have really she must have really um blew his mind huh she must have had moves remind me of another witch yeah i said it because y'all y'all like y'all don't want to hear truth or something all right then number 24 and she went forth and said unto her mother what shall i ask and she said, the head of John the Baptist. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Okay. Number 24, 25. All right. Then he said, and she came in straightway with hasten to the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. Hold on. I'm not finished. Walk with me. Oh, y'all walk with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we're on 26. He said, and the king was exceeding sorrow, yet for his own sake and for their sake was said with him, he would not reject her. Notice that he really didn't want to do it, but he got to got to do his word, man, man, instead of uh, obeying God. Right. So the latter part of this story is that they had John the Baptist beheaded. All right. So here's the deal. What am I saying? The same thing that happened then is happening now. They want the head of the true prophets. Let me tell you something. And I and I got to walk this thing and talk this thing the way God say do it. Because I ain't scared of none of you. Come on, somebody. Just like that street preacher wasn't scared of Kirk Franklin. Nobody's scared of y'all. Let me tell you, I'm so sick of the church. And I'm sure God is too. I love every last one of you. I need y'all to know that I love you. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. Let me tell you something. You see, my my first years, I told y'all, the first, I've been in ministry 23 years. The first 10 years, I have been so transparent. I told y'all, I was playing and straying. Yes, I was fornicating, doing this, doing that. So I see when people are doing that. Now, just because I don't say something, don't mean I don't see you. What am I saying? We all know when somebody does wrong or right. I'm so tired of y'all sending people to hell. Listen to what I'm saying. You know how you're sending people to hell? Because you're not telling them the truth. Y'all can't stand rebuke. Y'all can't stand correction. And the sad thing that y'all use is the scripture. Well, you're not supposed to judge. I got something for you today. Hold on. I got something for you. Oh, yes, I got something for you, which is scripture. Y'all want to go scripture? Let's do scripture. First Corinthians 6, 3 to 5. Let's start at verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life. Let me read that again because most of y'all don't understand. Let me tell y'all something what happened. The world takes and twists the word of God for their own use. Judge. You're not supposed to judge. Only God can judge me. Tupac started that one. Uh, you're not, so so let's, go, let's go through this thing again. I'm going to go slowly this time, okay? Know ye not that we should judge angels. Hold on. Angels are in heaven. And there are some below the earth that are demons. We're going to be judging them. Mm. How much more things pertain to this life? (laughs) If that is not self-explanatory. The devil is a lie. Y'all back up off of people that tell the truth. Stop that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me continue. Scripture. 
Verse 4 say, If thee ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, then set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. That's prophets, by the way. Let me read that one again. A little slower, okay? Okay. 1 Corinthians 6, 3 to 5, I'm reading. Verse 4. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Can I tell you something? Most people cannot stand true prophets. Y'all like the fake ones. Oh, I see money. Oh, I see cars. You're going to get married. You're going to get married. You're going to get married. Whatever. Verse 5, I speak to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. No, not one that should be able to judge between him and his, between his brother. God seeks and pulls out those foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Can I tell y'all something? So many of y'all bashing that street preacher. That was God. Oh, I'm about to walk this thing out with you. Nothing just happens. T.D. Jakes taught us that long time ago when he wrote his book. Nothing just happens. You didn't all even, you, you didn't count the cost to what happened. So I, I'm going to break it down little by little. God says that I set time in motion. So are you telling me that God didn't time that? Are you telling me that Kirk could have not went the other way? Let me tell you something. If I was not convicted. If I'm not convicted of anything somebody's saying, I'm at like I don't even hear you. I'm going to keep on walking. Notice he went across the street to where that preacher was. He could have just kept walking and nobody would have even seen that it was him. People would have thought that he was just crazy and bobbling. But I'm going to tell you what happened. The word of God will convict you till you go straight to it. He went straight to him. Huh? Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can say what you want to say. He went straight to him. And hold on. If you really look at it, he was so convicted. And the guy was not rude. Y'all need to stop that. And he was not being racist because I, I replayed it. He said, sir, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. He said, sir, I'm just telling you the truth. That's respect. Stop that lying. Stop lying on people. Let me tell you what's wrong with this present day church. Oh, I'm about to go here. Y'all are a bunch of vipers and snakes. Y'all the Pharisees and Sadducees. The one that really run. The, oh, I'm, oh, I'm on one this morning. I'm on one, Holly. And this is a holy righteousness. This is not, a, this is not bashing nobody. Because I, I still love Kirk. But Kirk lost. As a matter of fact, I'm going to throw uh, something in there. Go get a picture of Kirk. And then look at the Kirk now. Now remember. Facial structure do not change. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't even ready for the love I'm on. I'm talking about clones and all. Y'all not ready for me. Y'all have never been ready for me. Only a very few select of you. And I'm just being real because guess what? The world of its own. Y'all don't like us true prophets because we see. We see what y'all don't want us to see and we know what y'all don't want us to know. I'm talking to the elite and everybody flowing with them. Come on somebody, hallelujah. The world then came into this church and then turned this church upside down and brother against brother and sister against sister to where now the righteous ones is just like a Cain and Abel spirit. Cain want to kill Abel all over again, but the devil is a liar. And even if he killed Cain, guess what? The blood, the blood of Jesus will cry out. Hallelujah. Y'all better stop that foolishness. But let me walk this thing out so you can hear, really understand what I'm saying today. The world then came into the church. I couldn't understand. I've been in church all my life. Now, I didn't do right all my life, but I've been in church all my life. And it lasted for 23 years in ministry. All right. I was ordained in Manny, Louisiana, 1996. So I ain't no Facebook preacher. Back up off me. I got more credentials than some of y'all. That's mega ministry. Truth be told. Oh, yeah. Check my history. It ain't no mystery. But I couldn't understand why God took me out of church in 2015. I, I, I'm telling you, he said, Deanna. I'm taking you out. I was on the Bishop Loveless in Sacramento, California. I mean, one of the most potent pre preachers in Sacramento and pure. This man followed the Bible. So I didn't understand. I said, God, what do you mean? And I got to be real. So I pray people don't get offended because I'm going to say some things. I ain't got no choice. I got to be real. And God was like, Deanna, they don't believe in the prophetic. And your gift is not going to grow in there. And I was hurt. I said, but God, he's a good man. He said, yeah, he's a good man, but they don't, they're not going to let your gift grow. I need to take you out because I need to teach you some stuff. And God had to talk to me. God, now I'm going against God, but God got to be in church. I've never been out of church. I'm talking about I was tripping. And, and when God set me apart and he started talking to me, he said, Deanna, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Who is your God? I said, you are. He said, follow me, not man. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. He said, I want you to look closely. When I stepped out of the church, oh, well, you ain't got no covering. Where y'all get that from? Where y'all get that from? 
Because every prophet in that Bible, God was just covering. Let's go, let's go biblically. God says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Ownership. We don't belong to you. We belong to God. Hallelujah to his name. You got it twisted. Hold on. People of God, you do not belong to your pastors, your preachers, your teachers. You belong to God. There is there is just one job that they're supposed to do, and that is to be the keeper of your soul. And what I mean by that, let, let me clarify that. That means they're supposed to tell you the truth in love and out of love sometimes. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, tell you the truth because it's your soul at stake. They're not doing their job. So you know what God is doing? I told y'all it was going to happen. Didn't I tell you that God is raising up? Preachers and prophets that don't care about the status quo, don't care if y'all like them, don't care what y'all say, and and everything is real. But y'all don't want it to touch y'all. Can I tell you something? The church ain't been the church in years. Oh, come on, somebody, how do you tell you something? You talking to somebody that played. So the first 10 years of ministry, I played. And I understand why God allowed that. Because now I can spot it. Because if you got it, you can spot it. Anything that you used to be, you can spot. Come on, somebody. A liar could an uh, ex-liar. Can spot a liar. A cheater can spot a, a, a ex cheater. Y'all, y'all get what I'm just, whatever you ex from, you can spot it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know when somebody playing, you know when they righteous. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God is tired of the church playing. Most of y'all messages are not spirit filled. Y'all get them off the internet, or y'all just know how to write, or y'all just know how to gift the gap. If you've been doing stuff for 20, 30 years, that's your career, honey. Oh, like jo- Joe Osteen say, oh, I've been in the industry. That's what y'all think it of. Y'all don't even think of it's a ministry. Hallelujah to his name. This is ministry. The greatest teacher on earth and off of earth is God. Y'all sitting up there, y'all got them doctorates and everything. And, and even y'all notice I got that doctorate. Y'all notice I don't use doctor behind my name? On purpose. Because I don't want that foolishness to get in my spirit. Oh, you're a doctor. No, 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 no. I am who God says I am. Now, I'm going to tell you and y'all get mad if you won't. Everything in this hour going to be exposed because God said, I'm coming for a blameless and spotless church. That was done in love. Y'all sitting up there thinking that man, no, no, that was love. That was love because Kirk got one last chance before God really exposed me. That was a soft exposure. I know it look, kind of look hard, huh? No, no, no. You know when a hard exposure comes? When God do what he do to you. Ask Samson. When God allowed Samson's eyes to be gouged out, you don't think that hurt Samson? And I'm using Samson because some of you have the Samson spirit right there in the church. Samson didn't even know that God had left him. Many of you don't even know that God have left you because you've been doing it so long. You've been playing with Delilah, whatever your Delilah is, for so long that you don't even know that God has left you. And yes, God is a God of love, mercy, grace, but he's a God of wrath. And if you play too much with God, God going to expose you. Hold on. That's me too. That's what y'all failed to realize. The same people that preach it and teach it are under subjection, just like you, if not worse. Oh, God going to get us worse. Y'all don't see it? You should. Eddie Long. I don't say those things just to bring up stuff and, and talk about people. Every time I do a hard speech, you know God made me say that man's name. And it hurts because I was there when he had the power of God. I was there. I was at Ray of Hope in the 80s when he started. I saw the power of God on that man. So it hurts me to my heart the way he went out. Well, that's what God is trying to stop in this hour. God is trying to tell you, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Hallelujah to his name. And y'all getting mad because he'll send the prophets or leaders or even, to be honest with you, even a nobody. I'm sure people think that man is a nobody, but he's somebody to God. God will use, he used a donkey. God will use whatever and whoever it takes to get your attention. While y'all bashing that street preacher, can I tell you something? That may be the man that make Kirk step back and say, you know what? Lord, I repent. He ain't got to do it in front of everybody. But Lord, I repent. Because too many people not repenting. Too many people doing what they doing. Let me tell you something. It is not to hurt people and bash people. That's not what we do. But we are mandated. When God really told me my mandate, I cried, you guys. I cried. Because everybody don't have this mandate. I've I've, I've had famous ones contact me. Ooh, I'm about to go here. They contact me personally, but privately they don't do it publicly. Ooh, I'm about to go here. I got friends that they love my stuff privately but they won't post it publicly i don't want to be affiliated with her because people think she's out there people think she's mean people think she's this people think i don't care that for a year 
God made me realize. He said, Deanna, you better get over people. He said, because you're not going to be able to carry your mandate if you don't get over people. And I cried. He said, and yes, they're going to hate you. He said, yes, they're not going to understand you. He said, yes, they're going to lie on you. He said, yes, they're going to try to kill you. He said, yes, I mean, he said it all. And I was like, whoa. I cried. I said, man, what did I say yes to? I ain't going to lie. But then I w- I'm going to tell you. Oh, I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm telling you each day for this fast. I'm going to give you some keys to the kingdom. You know what I started doing? I said, God, well, who do I remind you of? And I can't tell you everything, but I'm going to tell you some of the things he said. He said, Deanna, I want you to look at, under Martin Luther King when he first started. I want you to look under Me- Mega Evans. I want you to, to see the life of Malcolm X. I mean, he gave me some hard people. And I saw how they died. And I saw what they died for. He said, that's how you're going to be. He said, I'm going to allow you to be reformed. And that's what happened. Because I told y'all, I, I wasn't a good person at one time. I, I did everything under the sun. I ain't gonna lie about nothing. But when I got reformed and still being reformed, come on somebody, hallelujah. He started working with me. He started putting an anointing on me. And then he said, are you ready to die for me? Spiritually and physically. Hallelujah to his name. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we have a church that don't want to do that. And it's gonna cost you you ain't gonna be able to drink. You ain't gonna be able to fornicate. You ain't gonna be able to, and that's, and that's the system that separates the pure and the unpure. Not that we perfect. We fail just like y'all fail. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But we're held at a higher standard. I can't do anything. Y'all will all know it. Trust me. Oh, they watch me. Even my circle. Oh, come on, somebody, just watching me. Well, I thought you said, oh, watching me. Well, look what you did. I'm talking about I'm on the scrutiny. Family, friends, God, everybody. They watching you talking about this thing real so when another brother or sister is attacked we get upset but we don't ask the question why did God allow that because nothing just happens what you should be saying is I'm gonna pray for them because both of them they were both ordained at that moment that was divine appointment God placed that young brother there and yet he's a brother, white color, whatever. It does not matter. Y'all need to quit tripping. Because guess what God told me to tell y'all? In heaven, they ain't got no sections. We're going to all be together. They ain't going to have the Negro. They ain't going to have the white grove. They ain't going to have the, the Chinese grove. They ain't gonna have, y'all, y'all get the point. We're going to all be together. So y'all need to stop with that. Ain't going to be no black church. Ain't going to be no white church. Ain't going to be no Pentecostal church. Ain't going to be no. No, we're going to all be together, baby. Hallelujah to his name. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. I'm going to tell you right now. We better stop lying on God. You do not understand the mandate of some people. And if you don't understand it, your position is to pray for them. Because we don't know what God told that young man to do. But whatever it was, he did it. Whether you like it or not. And to the lie of what I'm saying, rebuke, correction, we don't want to go through that. That makes you a better person. I have got rebuked several times since my ministry and it was hard and it hurt. It hurt. I was embarrassed, but it produced who I am today. So I welcome it. Hallelujah to his name. We don't get mad and bash people because they tell us the truth. But most of you do. Most of you do. And I'm going to say this too. Y'all acting like y'all don't see what y'all see. Y'all know. That the gospel industry is dirty. I got some good friends up in there. I could name some names and I'm not lying. They tell me everything was going on. Y'all forgot I was in Hollywood, huh? Y'all forgot I'm talking about I had an interview with Oprah people. I got really into it. I know some things. You guys, they really have to sell their soul. No, no, let me go deeper. Do God make stars? Because y'all ain't ready for the truth, but I'm going to give y'all some truth today. Do God make stars? Y'all know doggone what he don't. Him himself. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus himself made himself of no reputation. God says I would make your name great, but I, he never said he'd make you a star. Stars are only made through this world system. Let me tell you one last time. You cannot get there without their approval. Who is there? The elite in this world. So y'all sitting up there. They got people. Oh, oh, oh they're a star. Yeah, they're a star. So you know what they done did. Y'all don't want that to touch y'all. Even in the gospel scene. Nothing is being penetrated meaning that if it's truly the gospel of jesus christ and i'm going here and 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 please please come for me come because i'm gonna come with that holy ghost on you that holy ghost fire i ain't gonna cuss you i ain't gonna do i don't do all that but i'm coming with that holy ghost fire so please come for me because i'm about to say some things if tasha cobb really was ordained to be on a song with Nicki minaj Nicki still wouldn't be singing about booty the power of god would have broke that so stop lying if Kirk Franklin would have really been ordained to be with Kanye West, Kanye wouldn't be doing what he's doing. 
So somebody lying. When God ordains something, something breaks. So you mean to tell me that the power of God is not strong? The devil is a liar. Oh, come for me. Come for me if you want to. Uh, what well, God told us to do it. If God told you to do it, that would have been a manifestation of God because his power is real. And I'm so sick of you false apostles and false prophets talking about, uh, you're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed, you know what? Y'all the problem too. Y'all the reason people going to hell because y'all trying to be everybody friend because you want to be famous and all this other stuff. God going to hold you accountable too. God going to hold you accountable too, preacher. That's lying to people talking about money. And some of you false prophets that be on Facebook just, 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 just manipulating for money and the hearts. Everybody, now I'm going to tell you who the true judge is, God. But we are to judge each other's actions. Let me tell you how you judge every day. Let me ask you something. If you knew your friend was going to rob a bank, would you go with him? No, you would judge that action and you'll probably tell him, Luke, don't do that, huh? We judge every day. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Hallelujah to his name. Come on, somebody. You better tell people the truth. Because let me tell you what God is worried about. God is worried about souls. Y'all worried about a house, a car, followers, and all this stuff. God worried about souls. That's the heart of God. And God don't care how the job get done, as long as it get done. Because guess what? The person that he used to do it, they're going to do it. And if you don't do it, God skips. Oh, I learned that the hard way. God had told me to do something years ago. Start this business, just to be honest with you. Oh, I'm about to go here. I'm about to tell y'all some things y'all don't even know. I used to like really, I know, right? I used to be really be a rubber structure and everything. And it was in California. I got my building and everything. God said, I want you to do it this way. Everything God told me, you know, I didn't do, you know, Donna Richardson, Tom Joyner's wife did everything God told me to do. I was hurt. I said, God, why you give it to her? He said, you didn't move. I, I never told that story, but to close friends, now I told y'all, I was hurt. I was really uh, not jealous, but like, what, what, what's going on here? God said, you didn't move. Oh, I'm about to go here. A famous author, spiritual warfare author. Oh, I'm going here. This ain't never been revealed. I guess I feel the power of God. Y'all buy his books. Can I tell you most of his material in his books is my stuff and he's never said thank you. Yeah, I'm saying it. He started December of 2014. That's when I started my classes. Oh, I'm about to say stuff I have never told the public. God was telling me to write books. Y'all, I was so tired teaching the prophetic, I couldn't do it. My body just wouldn't let me. Or maybe I just thought I was tired. Who knows? But I had uh, classes the morning and the night. Everything I put on Facebook, and that was me, Put everything I put on Facebook is in that man's books. And he wonder why that I look at him side-eyed. I've read the books. I know my material. I'm not mad because he did what I didn't do. God bless you. But you should have said thank you. But you should have said. I'm just talking. Can we just talk? Hallelujah. The stuff real. If you don't do it, God will let somebody else do it. And I'm not mad. Don't get it twisted. I am not mad. But I will say this. Be mindful. Be mindful of what you say. Make sure it's God. Don't just attack people. And you're right, Tracy. That's why we can't tell people everything. Because they are dream killers and dream stealers. Hallelujah to his name. So that's all God told me to say. And, and, and that's another thing. When, when the Holy Spirit stop, you stop. You stop. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And you're right, Ida. Um, Ophir Winfrey did a man like that and made Green Lift show. Did not give him a dollar. Honey, y'all be surprised what goes on behind closed doors. And that's why, if I could leave you with one thing, ask God for wisdom and discernment and love people. Because no matter what I say or do, I love everybody. I truly do. I may not roll with you or hang with you, but I love everybody. Because hold on, I, at the thing, at the end of that thing, if God is not the foundation, you will lie you before God. But what people come against us as, we got to tell the truth. You know how people don't like me? Even my friends, they be front, they don't really like me. Oh, she, 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 she just do too much. You know what? I know sometimes I do, but I'm mandated to. So hold on. I'm going to leave you with this scripture like Paul said. Am I ought to obey God or man? I'm obeying God every time. So I guess hey, I guess people were going to say what they say and do what they do. I really don't care. And I love the way you said that. I hope I'm saying your, right, your name right, Miss Jackson. They, they did it to Jesus. They did it to Jesus and they're going to do it to us. So all I'm saying is, when somebody rebuke you before you get mad and try to ridicule them, why don't you ask God, is it true about me? Because I'm going to be honest with you, ain't everything a lie. Sometimes that stuff true. Hallelujah!
hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah. No, Miss Ida Teller, I used to have a prophetic school. And, um, ooh, God, you know, I did what I did. I think I did it for two years. And that was, ooh, that was, that was a lot. I can't lie to you. That was one of the most hardest assignments I have ever had in my life. Because I was birthing um, baby prophets. And if you know anything about, whoa, they came against me. They thought they knew more than me. It was just so much. But I love every last one of them still to this day. Praise God. Praise God. So I pray that you understand this is not to bash nobody. I, that's not the thing. But it's it's correction. And, and the apostolic anointing is about correction. Point blank. Point blank. Y'all know that the church is dressing provocative in church that's not god i don't care what y'all say i've been telling y'all this why do you think i have this on y'all notice i put this back on god keeps saying go back to the robes why y'all think there's too much incest in the church because you're looking at this man of god especially if he fine he got them tight jeans on who 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 what way i say it and and vice versa miss sitting up there preaching and her breast just flapping and what you think people gonna think they ain't thinking about the word they're thinking about a word but not the word we got to go back to holiness. Y'all wonder why the church didn't lost their mind. Because we're not adhering. And, and I'm so tired of people lying. But that's under the Old Testament. The devil is a lie. All of it worked together. All of it worked together. The old and the new. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. All right now. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who you are. Let's get it. Day seven. Come on, roll with me. Let's go to 40 days because guess what? I promise you, and I'm not just saying it. God going to break some stuff. God going to reveal some stuff. God going to bless you. God going to keep you. God going to deliver you. Hallelujah. God going God to anoint your eyesight for it. I'm talking about spiritual eyesight. God going to lay an anointing on you that you have never even seen before. But I'm telling you, the remnant, the remnant, the remnant, I keep hearing you. But you're going to have to walk this thing out. And you're going to have to fight through the spirit, not flesh. Hallelujah. So God bless you.